Muslim rights concern group, Murik, has warned that it would not fold its hands to watch Muslim students being persecuted in choir state. The group was reacting to the hijab imbroglio going on in the state, wherein some public school teachers were said to have forced female Muslim students to remove their hijab within the school premises. Meanwhile, Christians in choir state are making some key demands, which include the return of schools and no use of hijab, and the, that CAN does not want the schools to lose the identity of being built and owned by churches. Well, joining us to have this conversation, we have Abdullahi Ibrahim, former Secretary General of Islamic Missionaries Association, Iman, and Reverend Joseph Hayab, Vice Chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Northern States. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you, and good evening. All right. Well, I'm going to start with you, um, Reverend Hayab, Khan has chosen the option to pray to God about this situation as uh, a way to get a peaceful solution to the matter. But is prayer really what we need now or dialogue of some sorts? Well, when in the Christian faith we say we pray, we are simply saying that we don't want to use our human wisdom to address the matter. We need God's guidance. We need God's direction. Is not saying that uh, we are not going to dialogue. Is not saying that we are not having a discussion or conversation. Is simply saying that we need God's direction because this matter in question was actually there in 2008. Those who are familiar with Quara story will know that during the uh, Bukola Saraki era, this matter came up. A committee was set up. The committee came up with some understanding. Probably because uh, the governor then was a cosmopolitan uh, person uh, who looked at things from a different uh, perspective and chose to find a, very, a simple way of uh, addressing it. Uh, somehow, to the best of my knowledge, I know that about six groups of church uh, of schools uh, exist in Kwara State. One, the schools that are completely government-owned schools. So in such schools, you don't have any say. It is what government wants you to do. Then we have also the Islamic school, the schools set up by Islamic uh, groups or mosques, and the third one is schools set up by Christian missionaries or churches. And then we have also individuals who open their own schools. So at each of these schools, and then there are also schools that are quite Islamic teaching schools and uh, community schools, where community made up of Christians and Muslims come together to build a school. Each of these group of schools were allowed a particular way they can dress so that people will be, you see, but I, I, something is happening in our country that any tiny thing, people just want to come and eat it up and eat it up. When I read this press statement by uh, Mori, I cannot even understand what is going on in this country. Is it everything we must eat it up? When we go to, okay, you don't do visa or other things, but when you want to go to a school in the U.S., there are certain procedure and provision about that school, you are going to obey it. When you go to the U.K. and you want to enroll in their school, there are certain provisions and also requirements that you are going to accept it. But when we come here, we just politicize everything, hit up a whole sentiment into a matter that can easily be resolved. This is where I find it really sad. Okay. Uh, let me go to uh, Ibrahim Abdullahi. Um, Ibrahim, there have been riots on this particular issue that we're discussing this evening. What is the state government's position on this? And is it the position, the position that Murik has taken, is that the best way to go about it? Asking that businesses and schools that are missionary uh, in nature go back to River State. You didn't even say anywhere else. You said River State. Does that not seem like a hate speech of sort or a statement that could, you know, cause problems for not just your people, but of course the whole state in general. Thank you very much. I thought you asked me the background to the crisis of uh, hijab or ownership of school in Kwara State, and that would have been proper place to start. Well, that's, that's, the, that's supposedly the a public started, information. That's public. That's already public, and, and that's the basis for this conversation. No, we don't take it from the bottom. We don't take it from the top. We take it from the bottom. I thought you were going to ask me what happened that led to the closure of 10 secondary schools in Kwara State. I'll give you the details because that is where I live. Okay. It all started in 2012 during the governor during the regime of Alaji Abdul Fattah Ahmed, 
the Christian missions went to the governor that they want their schools returned to them. Otherwise, the government should compensate them. Incidentally, the governor himself schooled in Kaduna, and he told them that the schools were asked to be returned to you. Are uh, they the school taking over since 1976, 45 years ago? They said, yes, it happened in Kaduna and all over the country. Muslims handed over their schools to the government. Christians handed over their schools to the government. Then the governor told them that he was in the secondary school, Kaduna at that time, St. John's College, 1976. All schools were taken over by the state government. It was a military regime because the government at that time wanted to standardize education. As said by Reverend Joseph Ayab, we have three categories of schools. Schools established by the state government, schools established by religious organizations, and schools established by various communities. Government was seen that all of these schools, really the government schools that have the type of quality they wanted. Mm -hmm. And since education is for all, quality education must be for all. Okay. They now told mission schools, both Christian and Muslims, that if they wanted their school handed over to them, they should write formally. And all the proprietors of these schools, both Muslims and Christians, wrote in 1970s, 74, 76. All right. And the, the schools were later taken over in 1976. Community schools were also taken right. over. We, we do so not have enough time. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Abdullahi, we do not have too much time. You are raising I, about handing over schools. I'm sorry, Mr. Abdullahi. We do not have yes. time for the history class. It's very good okay. that you've given us a basis, but okay, please answer the, the question. Okay. The governor, the former governor said the schools belong to the government. And the Christian missions, I mean, the Christian missionaries demanding for return of their schools said, no, the school belongs to them. And the governor said he will not hand over the school to them. This argument continued between 2012 to 2013. It was then the Christians threatened that if the schools are not handed over to them, they will go to court. And in 2013, they filed a case against Kwara State Government in Ilorin High Court. And after three years of legal proceedings, the Ilorin High Court ruled that all the schools taken over belong to the state government and can never be returned All right, you, to them. You still that haven't the answered my question. Mr. Abdullahi, when, you still haven't yes. answered my question. We do not have time and we're running out of time. I'm going to ask you another question since you're yet to answer that question. Is a school I'm giving you the background. Yeah, Whatever we do not have time. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We okay. do not have time. Is a school a place for um, an exhibition of your religious outfits? Because I'm asking this question because we had a similar situation in Oshun State um, I think in 2008, where yeah. every student decided to show up in their different churches or whatever yeah, yeah. outfits. The traditionalists also had their children. It became a jamboree and a show of shame. Is this what we should be doing in a school where there's a uniform that is acceptable across boards? Is this what should be happening in a school? Should we be politicizing issues such as wearing a school uniform? I'm not sure you are aware of the current situation about uniform in Nigeria. If you are aware, I give you the example of the federal government colleges and federal government guest colleges across the whole country. In line with the religious teachings of every religion and in line with the permission given to everybody to practice his faith, the issue of hijab for female matured students who are females is that they should use hijab. And more than 10 years ago, Federal Ministry of Education had issued circular informing all the secondary schools across the whole country that those who want to put hijab on their uniform, they are permitted. So over 100 or 200 federal government colleges across the country they put a job on their uniform, the same uniform put by others. If that has happened at the federal level, they are respecting the provision in Section 38 
of the Nigerian Constitution, okay. which is also uh, spoken about in the National Policy on Education. All Putting right. on it there does not distort uniform worn okay. by students. All right, quickly, um, Reverend Hayat, we have just a few minutes to go now. In fact, we have a minute. Um, he's made a case that this is part of the Constitution. Now, missionary schools obviously fall on, under the law in this country. What do we need to do to not have these kind of issues come up again and again, which could cause some form of, I mean, right now, the, the, the BUREC is threatening these missionary schools to leave the state because they call Kwara State uh, um, an Islamic state. But I, the last time I checked, I think Nigeria is a secular state, but that's fine. What should you do, um, ask Ken, to Thank you. resolve this issue quickly? We have less than a minute. Yeah, you know, when people come out in public and make claims using our constitution, and you ask yourself whether the constitution they are reading is the same constitution you are reading. Let's not forget, as you cited an example of Washington State, when some drama happened, are you saying that the constitution do not exist because we have not changed our constitution? So which constitution and which of the federal, you are even giving us a figure of federal government colleges in Nigeria that do not exist. So these are many others are the kind of confusion we are having. The truth about it is that our children left home to go and study. Our emphasis is not about the knowledge they acquire. Our emphasis is not the way they have been trained. Our emphasis is not about how they are prepared to be something in the future. Our emphasis is just a dress code. And we just make the entire educational system a mockery of it. And we are hiding and saying it's a constitutional thing. Please, can you reach your constitution again and see whether the constitution said that? But don't also forget, if the constitution gives you right to hijab, the constitution also gives me right to other things that are different. So do I just wear also a okay. choir robe and walk into school? We we'll just set confusion. School's uniforms are done so that there will be some standard, some po program and po policy and, and, and orderliness in the way children appear in class. Even All right. In the way he wants. So we are not okay, to, well, we need to go. Unfortunately, we cannot, we cannot conclude this conversation. But I want to say thank you very much, uh, Reverend Joseph Hayab and, of course, Ibrahim Abdullahi uh, for speaking with us on this issue. Well, we'll take a short break. And when we come back, I'll give you my take. Stay with us. Well, here's my take. Now, false dichotomies, propaganda, religious differences, and ethnic biases, these are some of the major threats to Nigeria's unity. Continuously viewing issues from the prism of politics, religion, and ethnicity, fueled by political leaders and governments, blinds us from the issues at hand, thereby dragging our attention from the main issues. Why do we politicize everything, say, say hurtful and inciting things that could cause unrest? As if Nigeria doesn't have enough problems. We keep saying we want unity and peace, yet we're quick to say, you're, oh, you're a Norsena. No, I'm a Christian. You're not one of us. What does one nation bound in freedom, peace, and unity really mean if these divisive lines are so obvious amongst us? Can we really forge ahead as a nation if we do not blur these lines? We're only putting a plaster over the cancer, as usual, not trying to heal the country. But it's not just the job of our political leaders. It's our parents, it's families, it's religious leaders, it's communities. We need to put a stop to this segregation. Stop beating the drums of war and division. Peace is cheaper. I am Mariana Kohn, thanking you for watching. Do have a good evening.